Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be using the law of reflection to figure out where an image will be formed of an object seen through a plane mirror. Remember the law of reflection stated that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection and the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection are always measured relative to a normal. So let's see how that would play out. So here we have a mirror, uh, say viewed from the side or edge on, and here's an object that's going to be what we'll be viewing in the mirror. In this case, I just picked a candle because it was handy clip art. And oftentimes when we're doing these things in the lab, we try to use something that will emit light uh, as well as reflect light. So candles often work, work pretty well. So one of the first things we'll be wanting to know is how far is that object away from the mirror? And when you measure that, that's just called the distance to the object. And uh, in the equations, we usually represent it as d sub o. Now, that candle is going to be emitting light in all directions. In fact, every point on the candle will be uh, emitting light or reflecting light in all directions. So the, to find the location of the image, we usually pick two specific points on the object. And uh, in this case, I'm going to use the very top of the candle flame and then the very bottom of the candle. To find where the image of this candle will be, we don't want to take all of those light rays into account. Notice those light rays are all spreading out 360 degrees, all directions. Those light rays are diverging and they're never going to come together. But to figure out where the image is, we really only need to worry about light, two specific light rays. And it really doesn't matter which ones they are. We call it taking a sighting. And so what you do is you just pick any light ray from the top of the candle that goes into the mirror. Construct a normal at the point where it hits the mirror and then construct the reflected light ray. So the blue ray is incident to the mirror, the red ray is the reflected ray. Then you do that with a second sighting. In other words, you take another ray from the very point of the candle into the mirror, construct your normal, construct the reflected ray, and now we have two incident rays and two reflected rays. Notice that those two red reflected rays are diverging. They're spreading apart. They will never come together. However, if you were out there on the candle side of the mirror and you were looking at the reflection in the mirror, those two light rays look like they came from somewhere back here behind the mirror. And that point where those two rays look like they came together that's the location where the image of the tip of that candle will be. So to find the rest of the image, we just do the same thing with the other end of the candle. From the bottom end of the candle, again, we construct one light ray into the mirror, construct a normal, figure out the reflected ray. Then we take a second sighting, take a second ray into the mirror, construct a normal, reflect it off. Now again, those two reflected rays are never coming together because they are diverging. However, if you're on that candle side of the mirror and you're looking at the mirror, they would look like they came together or look like they originated back here. So where those two uh, rays come together, that dotted, those dotted lines in the back, that is where the location of your image will be. So the image will be right here and that distance from the image to the mirror is called your distance to the image. And we represent it with d sub i in equations. Now for a plane mirror, the relationship between the distance to the object and the distance to the image is an easy one. It always turns out to be the same size. So for a plane mirror, the distance to the object and the distance to the image will be exactly the same. Now one of the critical things about this image, notice that it is not only right side up, but there is no light there at all behind that mirror. All the light is on the left side of the mirror. So where that image is forming, it just looks like it's there because there is no light there. There really isn't anything there, so we call that a virtual image. I'm emphasizing that because in some of the other images we'll find later on, light rays really do come together and they could be projected onto a screen. And those types of images are called real images. But in a plain mirror, the image is always a virtual image.